بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا الشمس كورت وإذا النجوم كدرت وإذا الجبال سيرت وإذا العشاء عطلت وإذا البحوش حشرت وإذا البحار سجرت وإذا النفوس زوجت وإذا الموءودة سئلت وإذا الموءودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت وإذا الصحف نشرت وإذا السماء كشطت وإذا الجحيم سعرت وإذا الجنة أزلفت علمت نفس ما أحضرت فلا أقسم بالخنس الجوار الكنس والليل إذا عسعس والصبح إذا تنفس إنه لقول رسول كريم ذي قوة عند ذي العرش مكين مطاع ثم أمين وما صاحبكم بمجنون ولقد رآه بالأفق المبين وما هو على الغيب بضنين وما هو بقول شيطان رجيم فأين تذهبون إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين لمن شاء منكم أن يستقيم وما تشاءون إلا وما تشاءون إلا أن يشاء الله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبي الرحمة والهدى محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His entire household. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us to grant us goodness and ease and to ease or to create ease for all those who are suffering any form of difficulty in this world and more so to protect us from difficulty in the life after. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, what is your relationship with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is indeed full of gems and miracles and we need to understand it is the only word that is the most true in existence. وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا Who can there be more true than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who can there be more true in word or in speech than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yet you and I sometimes are faltering regarding our link with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important for us to realize that initially when the Quran was being revealed, it's amazing how the kuffar of Quraysh did not want to listen to a single word of that Quran. And the reason is as soon as they heard a word, immediately they felt inclined towards it no matter who they were even the enemies felt inclined towards it and i'm sure you know of the story of al akhnas ibn shuraik with abu sufyan and abu jahl when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to recite the quran 
in a beautiful voice at night, they used to tiptoe and go in the darkness to listen to the words of the Quran. Yet they were the enemies of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They did not accept him. They rejected him mainly because of arrogance, not because they belied the message and its contents. They knew deep down this is the truth. Wallahi, they knew deep down that this is the truth, and this is why Allah subhanahu wa taala says. قَدْ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَيَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ We know that the utterances they are uttering, they hurt you, they pain you, but we want to advise you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they do not belie this message. They are not in disagreement. No, they are in denial. They are denying who are in denial. The oppressors, the wrongdoers are in denial. They are arrogant, full of arrogance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So they did not want to hear the word publicly, but they were tiptoeing at night to listen to the word. And it so happened that as they are coming back, as they are returning from this beautiful listening of the Quran read by none other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Imagine you and I, we listen to a good reciter and we are soothed by it because it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, if it's recited correctly, Alhamdulillah, may Allah grant us the ability to correct our recitation further and to purify it. The correction of recitation is a mission that will only or should I say that cannot be accomplished, but rather it will only progress as our life progresses up to the point of death. We will continue to purify our recitation to correct it and the development of the link with the Quran will increase further and further. It will never be perfect, but the job is to try and get it to perfection such that the day we die, we will be upon the position that is the closest we ever were to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with these people, and let's take a look at this incident, and I'm starting off with it because it's important for us to draw a lesson from it. When they were tiptoeing back or coming back, they bumped into each other. What are you doing at this time of the night? May Allah safeguard us. What are you doing at this time of the night? One asks the other, and the other one says, well, what are you doing at this time of the night? And the third one says, well, what are you doing at this time of the night? And it so happened that they told each other the truth. And they said, you know what? We went to listen to the word of Rasulullah or the word of this man. We just wanted to hear it. They said, no way. We are the leaders. We are the leaders of Quraysh. We are the ones who are telling the people not to listen. And we are the ones listening. Imagine what hypocrisy. May Allah safeguard us from hypocrisy. Many times we tell our children not to do things, but we are doing them. We tell our children, for example, not to tap their phones in, in disrespect. But we are the ones who are disrespectful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Jazakallah khair. So it's important for us to know that they agreed we are not going to come back. And the next day, guess what? They were there. And they thought, the one thought that no, the, other, the others are not going to come. Let me go. And they all thought the same thing. So they got back Al-Akhnas ibn Shuraik, Abu Jahl, Abu Sufyan, and they were back there listening. And on the way back, again, they bumped into each other. Guess what? A second time. Leaders of Quraysh. What fools. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah safeguard us. Guidance was written for Abu Sufyan later on. Radiyallahu an. But as for the other two, no guidance was written for them. Allah knows best. But they heard the Quran from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Imagine, they heard the Quran. Allahu Akbar. They say the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa company, the best company in existence. If you had to be in his company, even just by looking at him for a split moment, with the correct heart, which means you have Iman, you were known as Sahabi, radiyallahu an. When people said your name, they had to utter after it, radiyallahu an. And that's the respect we uh, offer these companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But if a person has the wrong heart, the wrong condition, they can have lived on the same gully or alley, or right neighbors and so on, part of the family or someone who's extremely close but with the wrong heart they were not known as radiyallahu an they were known as the enemies of islam take a look at abu lahab related to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yet verses were revealed in the quran which are to be recited up to the end of time yet the incident was only one a one off incident basically where the statement of abu lahab was mentioned and i'll get to that inshallah in a few moments so getting back to what 
happened the second day they bumped into each other again hey what are you doing here now there was no question because they knew what they were doing there so the one looks at the other and they said okay let's forget about what we were doing here promise we are not going to come back second time round promise we are not going to come back no way there is no chance we're going to come back okay we all took our oaths okay we took our oaths went back take a guess the next day they were back for the third time subhanallah the power of the quran the beauty of the quran it's the word of allah it is magnetizing my brothers and sisters do you feel that magnetism do you feel magnetized with the quran we have thousands hundreds of thousands of reciters are there no reciters that you feel touch the heart when they read the Quran? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us not only to listen to it, but even to recite it. And this is why struggle to try and read the Quran correctly. Make an effort. Strive to read the Quran correctly. Some people are too shy to add the melody in the Quran. And we've always said this. It is one thing you should not be shy of. It is the word of Allah. Do it with the correct heart. And you know what? Practice at home. Do it in your own. Even when you're sitting on your own, don't just read the Quran. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawm din You want to be achieving greater spirituality from it. Read it melodiously. When you're on your own. That's what we're talking about. May Allah make it easy for us. Allahu Akbar. It is actually an act of worship to beautify the recitation of the Quran and to read it correctly, to make an effort, spend money to join courses that will teach you how to read it correctly. One might argue, okay, you're not allowed to charge when you're teaching the Quran. That, that's a, inshallah, that's differences of opinion we're not going to speak about today. But the reality is, at least make an effort. There are free lessons, wallahi, free lessons in your masajid and around you. Sometimes we don't even know that the masjid down the road that I lived next to, for example, for 12 years, there was a top reciter that used to teach people. And I lived right down the road and I never ever went there. After I left the country and returned to my homeland, I found out, hey, the top readers at that masjid, I lived right next door. Big deal. You lived right next door. You didn't benefit at all. Why? You were hardly ever at salah. May Allah forgive us. So these people, the third day, they bumped into each other once again on their way back. And that's when they took their oaths upon their gods and their idols and their various other, you know, items they used to worship. We're never going to come back. And thereafter, it's not mentioned that they returned. Subhanallah. And then take a look at the story of Abu Lahab that I mentioned moments ago. If I can just let you know what happened exactly was when the Prophet ﷺ was asked to deliver the message openly to a certain group of people, the people of Quraysh and the Ashira and you know, the, the clan of the Prophet ﷺ, he got hold of the top of the lot and he gathered them at Safa. And he asked them the question we spoke about yesterday where he says, if I were to tell you that there, there is an army behind me, this side of the mountain that you cannot see and that they are ready to attack you, would you believe it? And they said, yes, we would believe it. We've never known you to have lied, not even once. Subhanallah. And then what happened? He says, well, I'm warning you of a severe punishment that will come to those who disobey and you worship Allah alone and so on. And Abu Lahab gets up and he says, Tabban laka, ya Muhammad. Ali hadha jama'atana. A'udhu billah. May Allah safeguard us. You know, it reminds me of when you're young and you're growing up and someone corrects you and you say, who the hell do you think you are? Even my father doesn't tell me this. That's a similar answer. Wallahi, it's a similar answer. You know, people get angry when you correct them. My brother, this is a thing. I, I love you, I respect you, but please, this is a matter I need to talk to you about. Who do you think you are? And why are you telling me? And I don't talk to you ever again. No, my brother, don't be like Abu Lahab. May Allah forgive us. I, it's not that bad, okay? But at the same time, what we mean is, it happens that sometimes, especially young children, when they're full of energy and you try and tell them a small thing, look, you know, you need to be respectful or don't do this, they immediately give you an answer. Let's not let that happen to us. May Allah safeguard us. So what he says, Destruction be upon you. Tabban lak. Woe be upon you, O Muhammad. Is this why you gathered us? You're wasting our time here. We are the leaders. We are the top shots. We own the whole of Mecca, basically. We are the ones whom nobody can tell anything. Who do you think you are coming to tell us what to do and who to worship? And a lot of them thought perhaps he's saying this because he just wants to snatch from them their leadership and their power and authority, perhaps their wealth and so on. He wants to impress. No, it was a message of reality. So, Verses were revealed. Now that was a very big insult. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the most beloved to him who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa a mission to deliver a message. And when he delivers that message, immediately one man gets up 
and he is related closely to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he he swears in public. He tries to make a disgrace. What happens? You think Allah subhanahu wa taala leaves it? Never ever. Up to this day, we read the verses of the Quran in that regard. Do you know that? Immediately, the verses were revealed. Tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tabba ma aghna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab Sayasla naran thata lahab wa amraatuhu hammalat al-hatab Fi jidiha hablun min masad Subhanallah, what powerful verses All against Abu Lahab And why were they revealed? I met a man who told me, how can the Quran have an entire surah which is denouncing a man? And I said, what's wrong? The man denounced the messenger. So Allah is showing that that man is also denounced. That's all. So, but how can Allah curse someone? So that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the Quran. If you curse Allah, you are automatically cursed. He doesn't need to curse you. You are cursing yourself. How can you curse your own maker? He made you, he gave you your life. You'd be a fool. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So destruction be upon Abu Lahab. Woe be upon Abu Lahab. Upon both hands of his, not just one. And so what happened? The verses were revealed. That's one thing. But they are so beautiful. They, they have such a deep meaning. And at the same time, they are so easy to memorize. And that's the beauty of the Quran. The Quran is such that it's been made easy to understand and to memorize. Allah says so many times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We have made the Quran very easy to understand and remember. Two things. A dhikr actually has a deep meaning, but it would be included in it. A lot of people think that Yassarna al-Qur'an al dhikr means we've made it easy to memorize. Not just memorize, to understand as well. It is simple to understand the Qur'an. There will be verses that you may not understand. Those two are a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Some of those you will ask questions to people and they will be able to answer you if they have knowledge. Like Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that when you have, when you are doubtful of something, you ask those with knowledge, subhanallah. Ask those with knowledge and they will respond to you. If you would like the knowledge, you ask those with knowledge, they will respond. So if you do not understand a verse that has a ruling in it, you ask those with knowledge, they will respond. And if they don't and they tell you, look, this, we leave it to Allah. You read the verse, you understand it, you accept it and you leave its meaning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you need to know there are certain verses like that. For example, and we've given this example in the past. If I were to say, Kaf ha ya sad. Nobody can come to me and claim they know exactly what it means. No. We have to say Allah has kept the knowledge of that, of the meaning of that verse with Him. It's our test. We say the same thing. No one can come and say, oh, the kaf stands for this and the ha stands for this and come up with their own, you know, interpretations you need to have the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam explain to you exactly what it means and that that's when it would have been related to us because of the fact that it is not we will say allah has kept the knowledge of that with him but we will still read the verse we believe it we adopt it we accept it and we consider it we consider it a verse of the quran it's the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it has we might want to speak about the, the what it has in it and i can spend a minute for that you see, every Nabi, every Prophet of Allah came with something that was at the peak at that particular time, but he came with it on a much higher level that would prove that it's not magic and it is not even part of the ability of man, but it is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the time of the Prophet Jesus, may peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam, medicine was at its peak. You know, people were getting excited about how this one is cured and that one is cured. And when he came in, the miracles that he was granted by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were such that even the person who died was given life by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was a miracle of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And the Quran makes mention of it. 
Allah Akbar. Wa idh tukhriju al-mawta bi-idhni. Allah Akbar. Allah says, through our permission, you have taken out those who were dead. And what he used to do, he used to make a shape of a bird and he used to blow and it used to get life and carry on. Allah Akbar. The Quran makes mention of that. وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ فَتَنْفُخُ فِيهِ فَتَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِي Allah Akbar. Allah says, remember, O Isa alayhi salam, when you made these shapes, the shape of a bird, blow in it and it would get life by our permission. This is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam, he was at a time when engineering was at a very advanced stage. You find the pyramids and so many other, you know, uh, proofs and evidences of how they were advanced in that regard. What happened? Subhanallah, a little touch of his stick on the ocean and it opened out completely into roads, complete. This was the height of it. It's the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who knew and those who bothered to know would immediately believe that this is divine. This is something from Allah. This man is a prophet. This is why the Sahara, those magicians, you know, one narration says they were more than a hundred thousand magicians. Allahu A'lam, exactly how many they were. But make, mention is made of 120,000 of them and mention is made of thousands, a large number. If we want to give the correct answer, we would say they were a large number. So when they being experts in magic came through and they put down their ropes, you know, and they put down everything else, their sticks, and they became moving serpents. So it seemed like they were moving serpents. And Musa alayhi salam for a minute, you know, he was about to put his, his, his asa, his stick down. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthened him and told him, you put it down by our help. And as soon as he laid it down, we all know it devoured the rest of what there was. What did the magicians do? What did they do? They immediately fell prostrate because they knew this is not magic, man. Not magic. This is something, this is divine. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and now I'm fast forwarding to the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa What was the in thing? What were they bragging and boasting about? It was language. It was language. They were linguists. They would say, if you look at Umayyah ibn Abi Salt and the poetry that he said, and so many of the other poets and how they used to gather in their little clubs and India in order to listen to poetry. And they were at a top level, everyone competing with the other, although they were unlettered, but they could, they were very eloquent, very eloquent. So they knew poetry and they knew speech of man, but they never knew Quran because Quran is neither poetry nor is it the speech of man. Subhanallah. It's something in between that they really were baffled regarding completely and totally baffled. So this is why you hear the verses of the Quran. I opened the session this evening with powerful verses of the Quran. And why did I choose these verses? Because they are short, sharp verses directed to a topic of belief and aqeedah and what is going to happen in the future prophecies and subhanallah so short and sharp that those who do not want to listen are forced to listen and digest and understand whether they like it or not so the prophet sallallahu is reciting the verses for example Ida shamsu whoa what happened there let me tell you what happened the kuffar of Makkah used to say, don't listen to this Quran. Don't listen to it. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ The kuffar used to say, do not listen to this Quran. Don't listen to it at all. And make noise when it is being recited so that you may overcome, so that you may be victorious. You may overpower these people. They knew that the Quran has some power. It's a divine power. It's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So immediately you find when the Prophet ﷺ would recite a verse, they would take their fingers and put them into their ears. And this was something they used to do. Put them into their ears. But the beauty of it is, as soon as they took their hands up towards their ears, the verse was over. Too late. The verse is over because I, I hear either shamsu and I lift my hands up by the time I put them in. It's, it's already kuwirat is already recited. So I put my, my fingers in. So it gives me an opportunity to think. Allahu Akbar. Now my ears are closed and I'm busy thinking, whoa, I just heard either shamsu kuwirat. That means one day this is what's going to happen to the sun. 
and I've just heard this. And then I think, okay, it's over. Let me put my fingers down. So I put my fingers down. So it happened. It's over. By the time I put my hands down, when I want to lift it up again, what happens? The entire verse is recited, complete, gone, finished. And my ears are, my ears are blocked once again and it's giving me a moment to concentrate. So it's a miracle, Wallahi. Nobody could have ever thought that such a short, sharp verse would actually pierce to the deepest point of the heart. Subhanallah. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh. We're talking of the miracles of the Quran and the gems in the Quran. He came out with an intention to commit murder. That's what, that's what, that was the intention. And he just read short verses of Surah Taha. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى We have not revealed this Qur'an to you, O Muhammad sallallahu in order for it to be a point of distress for you, or in order that you fail and so on, you know, you become shaqi, or so that you are saddened and so on. No, the Qur'an is there in order to elevate you. Like Allah says, إِلَّا تَذْكِرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَى it is only but a reminder for those who are conscious of Allah, who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you're not conscious of Allah, there won't be a reminder for you in that Quran. If you want to be reminded, you need to have consciousness. You need to have the fear of Allah in you. You need to understand that the competition around us of materialism is short-lived, wallahi. If Allah has blessed you, alhamdulillah, you work hard and you thank Allah, but you do not let that make you forget your main purpose in life. Subhanallah. You are meant to be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu read the first few verses and he began to cry. His heart was shattered, meaning the hard heart crumbled and softened. So much so that he says, take me to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you know what happened to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. What moved him? Few verses of the Quran when he looked at them with the correct heart. How many of us, and this is a cry, we need to continue mentioning this. We finish khatma upon khatma, we complete the Quran so many times. Ramadan, we've done this and we've done that. And wallahi, our lives have not changed. Not changed at all. And those were the men they read two, three verses and they were known thereafter as radiallahu an. Subhanallah. He was a man who dedicated his whole life thereafter. He was a man who championed the cause. He became known as Amirul Mu'mineen, radiyallahu an. Today, if you have to say the name of Umar, there are a group of people who will run away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can really elevate the status of Umar ibn Khattab to exactly where it's supposed to be. Radiyallahu an. But what about us? We are living at a time where it's not just a few verses of Surah Taha. But we have access to our phones. We have access to the internet. We have access to the mashayikh of the globe, Wallahi. We have access to anyone. You name him and you will be able to listen to a lecture of his online. Subhanallah. You name him. And yet we are far away from the deen. We haven't yet changed our bad ways and habits. We haven't yet prepared for the day we are going to go into the grave and that could be later on tonight and it could be tomorrow. Wallahi. So start doing good deeds. Let's turn to Allah. This is the power of the Quran. Take a look at an Najashi. When Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an happened to recite a few verses of Surah Maryam. Kaf ha ya sad. ذِكْرُ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَبْدَهُ زَكَرِيَّا إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيَّا قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا وَلَمْ أَكُنْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيَّا These are the verses of Surah Maryam. And what happens to an Najashi? He breaks down. He breaks down and he weeps. Subhanallah. How many of us weep when we listen to the word of Allah? This man was a Christian and he wept and his tears are mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making mention of the Christians who cried, who wept, and whose tears rolled down their cheeks when they heard the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about us? How many of us would even take the time to listen to the recitation of the Quran and to be able to be affected by it and impacted by it? Yet it is at our fingertips. Today, we have our children, mashallah, if a child can't sleep, give him the phone, give her the little phone, iPad, whatever else, and you can listen to your movies and watch Donald Duck and watch Mickey Mouse. In fact, they don't even know who Donald Duck is. I asked a kid a few days ago, Donald Duck? He says, what's that? What's that? I, I, when, when I was little, Donald Duck used to feature quite strongly, you know. Today, only Allah knows what's going on. Allahu Akbar. They have Ben 10, I think. <laughs> or 10 Ben, subhanallah. And they have angry birds. And I, I'm always surprised. Why are the birds angry? Why couldn't they just have had happy birds? <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, happy birds, wallahi. And, I, and the beauty is, subhanallah, they have Tom and Jerry, and I love to talk about these two, because they're still going on. Do you know why they're going on? Have you ever seen Tom and Jerry really get along, and one comes with tea to the other, and one greets the other, and they're sitting and doing something? No, they are fighting. One is, he spends his whole existence trying to do the other one down, and that's exactly what our our children have learned and when we grow up as adults 30 40 we are doing the same with everyone else we it's a competition what you have no ways i'm not talking to you you've got more than me no i will make sure you come down and this is what's going on we are toms and jerry's may allah forgive us it happens we need to change this life of ours and we need to make sure we understand that little phone that we've given the children wallahi today there is an alternative to those cartoons where you have islamized where you have Islamized programs and we may be able to use this. You know, subhanAllah, someone was telling me, why are you encouraging people? Wallahi, you need an alternative. You need an alternative. If you do not provide a suitable alternative to your children, they will never ever want to shift from doing something to cutting it completely when they know that this technology still has to be used. So you guide them to say, listen, the phone you can still use or should I say the iPad or whatever other technology you have but let's channel it into the right direction let's make sure we use it correctly so you will use this and this and this and you will stay away from X Y and Z but the problem is when mom and dad themselves tell the children don't watch this type of movie don't watch that type of movie and the kid says no problem dad and then the kid goes to the, the, the room of the mom later on or the dad and, and opens the door to say, mom, I need a bit of water. And what's, what are they watching? The same movie they told me not to watch. Oh no. <laughs> Hypocrisy. Look at this. This is what happens to us. Wallahi. So this is why we say the Quran is such a powerful gift of Allah. It is the ultimate gift that Allah has blessed us with. It is the miracle of this age. Subhanallah. It is something that is living with us. It is the most powerful ever. You take a look at those. And you know with the with technology, Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for technology because with technology, we have been able to see little children and adults from across the globe make an effort towards the Quran, which embarrasses us. We've done nothing. I've seen a young man from Egypt, subhanAllah, he memorizes the Quran in such a way that you just have to bring a little word and he'll recite any word you want and he'll tell you exactly how many places the word is in and where it is, what's the page number, what's the line number, what's the verse number. No other book ever in existence can that ever happen to. Not a single soul has done that to a book with so many pages and, and so big. Subhanallah. It's a miracle. It's Allah. Our children memorize the Quran at a young age. Wallahi, you write 500 pages with your own hands and you won't be able to memorize what you've written yourself. Never. This is the Quran. But where are we? What effort do I make? Wallahi, those people have prepared for their paradise. What about me? I need to prepare for mine. May Allah grant us a gift. Really? My brothers and sisters, it's about time we did something. There is no point in believing that, okay, the Quran is, mashallah, the word of Allah, excellent. But my life is far away from what the Quran teaches. What's the point? People say, do you know what? Really, mashallah, lovely recitation. Oh, that sheikh, have you heard this guy? And we've got all the recitations in our, our car. And that's where it stops. No, the hadith speaks about those who will come out of the deen known as al-khawarij. What does it say? It says, yaqra'oon al-Quran. They will be reading the Quran. Yaqooluna min qawli khayri al-anam. They will be saying statements, powerful statements. La yujawizu dhalika taraqeen. Doesn't go down their throats. Why? 
hypocrisy. You can say beautiful words, may Allah safeguard myself and yourselves. Wallahi, this is why I always like to say, whatever I've said, Wallahi, the advice is for me firstly, and then for everyone else. May Allah make it easy for me to adopt the goodness and make it easy for us all. Wallahi, it brings tears to the eyes. We continue saying beautiful recitation. We read well, we, everything goes well, but where's the practice? Where is it? We haven't made an effort. We don't even know sometimes. Come on, we can do better by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah and it is the gift of Allah. We are so blessed that we are living subhanallah at a time where technology is, well, for us at a peak. And like I said, you can listen to who you want, what you want. When the little child goes to sleep, it would be a beauty for them to be listening to the Quran, to be listening to some beautiful speech, to be listening to something really good, to be listening even if it meant, even if it meant cartoons that are beneficial, Islamized completely, where they are learning etiquettes. When I was young, and I'm sure when you guys were young as well, a lot of you perhaps, our parents had much more time for us. That's a fact. They taught us etiquettes on the table. Today on the table, it's you alone and sometimes you with a maid or sometimes perhaps you with people who are on their phones. Allahu Akbar. And trust me, just as well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept food such that you've got to put it in your mouth. Because the rest of us, if it was, if we were able to actually just have it through our phones, it would be through the mobile phone. Trust me. It's, it's, it's a gift of Allah. You're supposed to put your phone away. When you enter into the dining room where you want to eat, leave your phone aside. Leave it away. 10 minutes, 15 minutes is all it will take you. Perhaps a little bit more, a little bit less. And trust me, those are the most powerful minutes of socializing with your family. Trust me. And what do we do? We pass the water, pass the bread, pass the sauce, pass this, pass that. Everything is here and we're busy eating and on our phone. And people can tell you what they want. You don't hear. You don't hear a thing. Why? I'm on my phone and I'm busy eating. That's not what it's all about. So if that's the attitude, then we are changing the mindset of the children. So I have not taught my children manners because I was very disrespectful even in their presence. I've not had the time to do anything with them. The bare minimum is introduce them to some form of good programs that will inculcate in them salam. Today, the children walk past. They barely greet you. They don't greet anyone. When we were young, everyone was uncle. Allahu Akbar. Salamu alaikum uncle. Wallahi, that's how I was brought up. Even if my dad might have had a problem with someone, we were never allowed to know what the problem was. You have to greet him. So what? The problem is between me and him. Nothing to do with you. That's how we were taught. Subhanallah. You greet him. You're a child. Today you got a problem with an uncle. The whole village, you're not allowed to greet them. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Why? Because I have a problem with that man. It's over. You know, recently there was someone who wanted to marry another person. And they were, when many years back, the families got together. And so someone sends me an email to say, you know, my dad is saying no. What's the problem? Well, you know, there's a $10,000 outstanding that that man owes my dad. And there's a discrepancy of, brother, for $10,000, you messed up a beautiful relation. Allahu Akbar. And you know what? Your son is not going to agree with any other woman. So if you really wanted that, you should have engaged in the life of your child such that you helped him grow up so that from the beginning when his decisions were about to be made, he would have involved you in it. The problem with us, my brothers and sisters, we do not involve in the lives of our children until when it suits us. So then we say, right, you are not going to marry this person. But where were you when I had a problem? You were gone. You were not even there. These people helped me. This is what happened and so on. And today I've made my mind up, dad, too late. Allahu Akbar. And then we suffer in the home. The best thing for you to do, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cry, weep, repent to Allah. We are the ones who were wrong. The way we brought up our children needs modification. Allahu Akbar. So this is why we say it's important for us to make use of technology. Of late, I came across certain cartoons and some beautiful songs that encourage children to to do good and i was quite impressed and i said mashallah you know the work of islam is so so vast and broad that there are a million and one ways to serve the deen so there are some people who serve it through creating these little cartoons and some people serve it through doing this and through doing that and perhaps through a talk of motivation and through teaching in the masjid and some people teaching online and some people doing so many different things mashallah today you can achieve a degree islamic online university just online subhanallah that was impossible some time back but the question is who makes use of it allahu akbar may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us we have it 
accessible. Wallahi, if it was something like a perfume that you desperately needed that was sold online, you would pay double the price to get it. But that perfume and the scent which is going to be put on you in Jannah, in order for that to happen, you just need to develop a link with Allah. Wallahi, you need to develop a link with Allah. We are so happy about our clothes and our, our, the stuff we have. And mashallah, you know, to smell good and to look good. And everyone would do everything. You know, ask the ladies. They know even better. Subhanallah. They'll tell you this is this and that is that. And everything is becoming organic once again. Allahu Akbar. But what about your link with Allah? I want the same goodness in Jannah. What's the point of having a beautiful face and beautiful body and lovely clothes and in Jannah? Or we don't even know where we're going to go to start with. And on the other side, we have nothing. That's not fair. So develop your link with the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your doors. And that does not mean that we are Quraniyun. May Allah forbid. Quraniyun are those who say we only accept the Quran, the Sunnah is discounted completely. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. And may Allah guide such people. Wallahi, that statement is so flawed that they have not yet read the Quran correctly because had they read the Quran correctly, it leads you to follow the Sunnah. That's what it is. Allah says in so many places in the Quran that what the messenger has given you, you take. Whatever he has said, you, you take it. Part of the sunnah. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever the messenger has given you, you take. Whatever he has prohibited, you consider prohibited. That's the messenger. That is rubber stamping the entire sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something else. When it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ Allah says, nay, indeed, by your Rabb, they are not considered true believers until they make you a judge in the matters that they are disputing regarding. You, the judge. And on top of that, when the decision of the messenger is given, they feel no form of difficulty or no hardship to adopt it. They don't feel any negativity in their hearts towards the adoption of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu or the decision of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That is when you're a true believer. How many of us, when it comes to the problems and matters we face in whatever aspect in life, what happens is we quickly run to the sharia. Hey, I want to sort this out according to the sharia. Why? Because we know I'm going to gain. And the minute I'm going to lose, no, no, no. Let's go to the court. Allah speaks of those people in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it loud and clear in the Quran. This Quran is such a big miracle that it is valid for my life and yours and the lives of absolutely everyone. I am covered in it and so are you. And this is why by default, when you have an Islamic speaker who comes to talk to you, you will 99 times out of 100, you will feel this man is talking to me as though he knows my life. You know, I was in one city and I spoke. And I gave an example. I said, you know, if someone owes someone so much and someone does this and that and the example and I walked out of the masjid and as I'm walking out, one uncle comes to me and he says, did someone tell you about our problem? I said, no. He says, well, you just spoke about it. <laughs> I said, no, I was just giving an example of the cuff. He says, no, Are you sure no one to... Then I said, listen, you know what? It's Allah and Allah wanted you to hear it. And perhaps it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Quran is valid for me and you. So when I, I have five fingers and so do you. I have two eyes. May Allah grant us all the wisdom, the ability to look. You know, it's not just the eyes to see, but the ability to understand as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. We have. So if I were to tell you, brothers, the man with five fingers, put up your hand. The whole jama'ah will put up their hands. May Allah forgive us. So it doesn't mean I knew you, but we all have five fingers. We have similar problems. If I speak about the difficulties in the masajid, let me tell you. I'll give you an example. Come Taraweeh in Ramadan, people are complaining about the air condition, right? In which masjid? Nearly every masjid in the world. 
Come time of Ramadan, people are complaining about the window. Oh, you know, especially in Europe and, and some other countries where it's quite cold. And one uncle says, close it, one says, open, close and open. Subhanallah, the other day on WhatsApp, someone sent me a message. They were about to start Salah and one man tried to pull the other one to, together. And this one fists him and blows him up in the masjid. And the whole jama'ah, you know, tries to stop it. But this is what goes on. So if I were to talk about these matters, perhaps they've happened in many, many places. It does not mean I know a particular person. But it does mean that the gift of Allah is so broad that it covers you and covers me. And the way I think and you think would not be very, very far in terms of, for example, uh, certain decisions to be made when it comes to our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us make the correct decisions. I mean, so my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that today when the priorities we make are flawed, we will not be able to expect goodness from our children. We need to prioritize. The child should be such that they themselves will say, I need to learn. I want to learn. I want to understand. If your idol is one of those idols from the West, then what do you expect the child's idol to be? We don't believe in idols at all. We believe in role models who are role models of goodness. And remember one thing in Islam, the supreme role model is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As for the rest of us, you may take a few things from our lives and you will have to take, you will have to discount a few things. You, there is nobody else who is perfect. It's just Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The rest, you have to take some and you have to discount some. Some people you can take more than you discount and some people you have to discount more than you can take. And some, you might not really want to take anything from them. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us and may He not make us from those. So ask yourself, when I speak to my children, when I show excitement in the home, who is it about? Is it about someone who's good and worth following? Or is it about someone else? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us from those who send the children in the wrong direction and then expect goodness from them. So let's get back to this Quran. The topics that are covered in the Quran are vast. It covers entire life. It covers everything. The explanation is provided in the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you find Salah. Salah is instructed in the Quran, but the details of that Salah is explained in the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Definitely. You find Zakah. Zakah is instructed in the Quran, but the details of what to give, how to give, when to give and so on, all found in the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You find Hajj, for example, it is instructed in the Quran. And at the same time, the explanation is in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khudu anni mana sikakum. The hadith says, take from me these actions of hajj. And the, the, the various uh, elements of hajj are to be taken from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As you see him do, so you shall do. The same applies to salah. He says, sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have the instruction of salah. How do we fulfill the salah? He says, fulfill the salah exactly as you see me fulfill the same salah. So when they saw him and they recorded it, that this is what we saw him do. That's what we saw him do. All our duty is to follow exactly as we have been taught. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has done. And you will not go wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. The difficulty, my brothers and sisters, there are so many distractions on the globe today. So many. The marketing of materialistic items is so aggressive that wallahi, it sucks through even the most dedicated person. May Allah forgive us. Sometimes we all become followers of something. You know, we say, hey, you know, uh, I've seen the latest of this. Hey, what do you think about it? But brother, relax. Alhamdulillah, Allah's blessed you. You're allowed. It's not haram. But don't let that overtake your main focus. What is the main focus? My Jannah. I need Jannah. You need Jannah. The rest of my stuff, we're going to leave it behind. If I get to Jannah by the will of Allah, that is it. I, whatever has happened in this world is by the way. By the way. Trust me. But you need to get to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to achieve that. My brothers and sisters, a beautiful gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so beautiful, the Quran. And this, when we speak of the gems in the Quran, they are plenty. You know, from a young age, I was very intrigued by something. And I share this often with people. And it is the difference between the verses revealed in Mecca, known as the Mecca period, and those revealed in Medina. Those verses revealed after the Hijrah are known as Madani, right? The Madaniya verses. And those revealed before the Hijrah are known as al Makki. And you will notice the contrast between the two. The topics that are dealt with are quite different. 
in Mecca, they, the concentration was on various matters. It was on belief, belief in the unseen and the angels and heaven and hell and so on. These topics are in Mecca. Most likely, if you come across those type of verses, you can close your eyes and say this verse was revealed in Mecca. If you come across the stories of the previous messengers, the verses were revealed in Mecca. You can actually close your eyes the minute you see the names of the previous prophets and you can more or less guess that this is in Mecca and go and check it and confirm it. You will find that yes, it's true. Similarly, when you have details of, you know, the details of the Salah and the details, for example, of, uh, in fact, uh, let me correct myself, the details of inheritance and other details and the long verses, you'll find that those are the verses of Medina Munawwara. The longer verses which have deeper explanation in them because now the people are believers so now they need deeper explanation from this we also learn that you know when you are speaking say for example i'm speaking today 45 minutes to an hour is more than enough subhanallah the minute i drag it i drag it you find people walking out there was once a man and i heard the story subhanallah he he was a lecturer and he's lecturing and he's lecturing and you know the people began to walk out and he continued because he was taught by his sheikh and you know what? Don't worry about numbers. And that's true. Don't worry about numbers. So he says, no problem. Everyone walked out and one man remained. One man. Just, and he kept on talking and he talked for another hour with the man alone. And the man is just looking, looking, subhanallah. And later on, he finished his talk and alhamdulillah, he's now walking out and he tells the brother, brother, mashallah, I'm so impressed by your dedication. Even if it is just one man, one man. But subhanallah, jazakallah khair, you know, you really, Allah bless you, grant you. He said, Shaykh. I was waiting to lock the door, man. <laughs> I have the key. I was waiting to lock the door. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. Is that the type of dedication we have? Allahu Akbar. But the moral of it is, you need to understand the level of the people. Look at the Quran. The verses of Mecca clearly are short, sharp, because those people were not really interested in listening. Today, mashallah, we are interested in listening, but believe me, everyone has a time. After which you get tired and you start thinking, okay, mashallah, you know, I gave an example at a school I visited yesterday, or was it the day before, where I said, you know, when you have cough mixture, I, if I have a cough, I need to have cough mixture. But I cannot just have the whole bottle gulp it down and think, okay, that's good because I've had the hundred mils and now it should be okay by tomorrow morning. You'll die of diarrhea, my brother. Astaghfirullah. May Allah safeguard us. You need five mils or ten mils. And after a certain time, you need another five mils and a certain interval, another five mils. The same applies to us. We continue reminding each other today, tomorrow you will have someone else speak to you. The following day you have another person speak to you and it's very healthy and very good and you need to keep it up. And this is part of the link with the Quran and this is part of understanding the gift of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no point in reading the whole Mus'haf today and then for one year I don't read it. A lot of us in Ramadan we think, oh, Shahrul Quran. We've heard that it's Shahrul Quran. Shahrul Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Mashallah, powerful verse. It is the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was brought down. Subhanallah. And we say, right, that's the month of Quran. Every day we read so much. When Eid comes, we put our Quran back on the shelf. Up to the next Ramadan. Up to the next. When the next Ramadan comes, we dust it out, everything nicely. Mashallah, Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Yes, the Quran. What an insult. A mu'min is he whom on a daily basis he has a link with the Quran. Even if it means less, خَيْرُ الْعَمَلِ مَا دِيمَ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْ قَلَّتْ أَوْ وَإِنْ قَلْ The best of deeds are those that are done regularly, even if they are little. But you do it regularly. You cannot, you cannot operate in a way that I do everything today and then I have a break. No, like Salah, you know, and Wallahi, it's a true story, a very true story. There was a visitor who visited the home some time back. And this was many years ago when we were young. And the lady is making wudu. So she makes wudu once, twice, three times, four times, five times. And then she gets up and she reads some salah and so on. And you know, my mom asks her, what's going on? She says, no, we have a wedding. And you know, I just need to make a few wudu. So if one goes, you know, I have another four. <laughs> That's foolish. We have a wedding. I have another four wudus. And I never thought in the wildest of my dreams, even as a child, that someone could actually believe that and do that. May Allah forgive us. Really. But that's the attitude we have with the Quran is the same. Let's be honest. You know, when we, when we have a small problem or something, we get up for tahajjud. Like Allah says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَآ بِجَانِبِهِ 
وإذا مسه الشر فذو دعاء عريض When man is given a gift, when he is blessed with so much, he turns away, he's on his side, he turns away from Allah. He forgets sometimes that Allah even exists because he's, he's in too much comfort. He's in this comfort zone where shaitan managed to get hold of him, certain people. And then Allah says, and when man is afflicted by a little bit, he makes these broad du'as. He makes these du'as like he's never ever, you know, been away from Allah. He's so much Allah, Ya Allah. You know, when I was young, I don't know, you might have also seen this. You know, people make dua, they raise their hands, mashallah. And then you have people, you know, they raise their hands a little bit more. And then you have people who raise their hands a little bit more. And then you have the guys who do this. And I always say, oh, that man must be having a big problem. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. It's the passion because you really think, Ya Allah, you know, and you're crying. But you don't know the same dua, you can also make it just like this. And Allah is hearing you, Allah is hearing you. But subhanallah, don't touch those people because you get one solid clap. <laughs> you know, at that moment of passion, if you say, hey, they'll say, keep quiet, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So the beauty of it, and this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not be doing so many deeds one day and then we forget about it. Even your charities, mashallah, sometimes you might have an opportunity to do something big, get it done, alhamdulillah. But keep it going. It doesn't mean I did something big yesterday. Now, Alhamdulillah, I'm going to rest for another two years. No. May Allah forgive us the link with the Quran every day. You should not commence your day without the Quran. It's the word of Allah. You should not end your day without the Quran. It's the word of Allah, even if it means one verse. And this is why if you take a look at the powerful hadith that we are all supposed to knowing to be knowing of by heart and we're supposed to be practicing upon it, you will come across it. The Prophet says, convey from me, even if it is a single verse, one verse. And that is so powerful for me because it makes me learn that a single verse is enough to change a person to motivate them, to actually shake them up completely. And that's the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not underestimate the power of one verse. Give it. And how long does it take you to convey just a little verse? And this is why sometimes, and it's reported that, you know, the, 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 the great predecessors, when they used to meet each other, and sometimes as they used to part, they used to remind each other of the, one of the shortest surahs of the Quran. But it's full of meaning. What is it? Surah Al-Asr. Wal-Asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. What a short surah. And we know it. We memorize it. Do you know its meaning? Have you ever made an effort to listen to the deeper meaning of that surah? And have you ever understood what it's all about? Subhanallah. These are the gems. These are the miracles of the Quran. Something short and beautiful. So getting back to what I was saying about the Makki verses and the Madani verses, something very unique is that in the short, sharp verses of Makkah to Al-Mukarramah, there is a rhythm. It's not poetry, but at the same time, it's somehow you find the ending of the verses rhyme. And suddenly, it changes. Why does it change? That's a, that's a gem. That's a gift. That's a miracle. Subhanallah. Nowadays, you have a Quran and you can look for it. You will find it in the bookstores. You have a Quran where they use a color code known as the topical Quran, where they have the topics of the Quran, the topic that's discussed in a different color. So you have pink and then, and then green shows that the topic has changed and then blue shows that the topic has changed and at the bottom they write for you what the topic is. It's beautiful, it's excellent. I actually have a copy of it and I like to read it because it helps me uh, even though I know the Arabic language and so on, but it just feels so good because it's a miracle of the Quran. And you will notice when the rhyming comes, as soon as the rhythm changes, it's a new topic. That's Allah's gift. Subhanallah. You know, like for example, and I'm going to give you this example, I've cited it in the past, but let me make mention of it. Ya ayyuhal muddathir. Do you hear how it ends? Muddathir. Qum fa'anthir. You heard it? Wa rabbaka fakabbir. Wa thiyabaka fatahir. Wa rujza fahjur. Wa la tamnun tastakthir. Did you hear it all ended quite similar? And suddenly you hear, فَإِذَا نُقِرَ فِي النَّاقُورِ Different. Why? 
the topic has changed completely from one. These were the instructions to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so on. And now Allah is reminding you of the day that the trumpet will be blown. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah says, فَذَلِكَ يَوْمَ يَوْمٌ عَسِيرٌ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ غَيْرُ يَسِيرٌ Topic is over. ذَرْنِي وَمَنْ خَلَقْتُ وَحِيدًا وَجَعَلْتُ لَهُ مَا مَمْدُودًا وَبَنِينَ شُهُودًا New topic, new subject. Allahu Akbar. And these are the verses of the Quran, but how many of us would know that the topic has changed? We've just read it and we carry on and that's it. And it stops there. These are the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people of Mecca who were the most eloquent, they turned to Islam because they understood what was happening. They knew, subhanallah, they knew that this is the correct religion. They knew the message is correct. Take a look at Khalid ibn al-Walid ibn al-Mughira radiallahu anhu. Take a look at this man. You know what happened? He was an enemy of Islam. He was one of those who is known in the battle of Uhud for having afflicted a lot of harm upon the Muslimin on that day because he came from the back. And what happened later on, the Prophet ﷺ said something powerful to his brother Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid radiallahu anhu. He says, Ayna Khalid? He asks him, where is Khalid ibn Al-Walid? And he knew Khalid is intelligent. How did he deduce the intelligence of Khalid ibn Al-Walid? Because of him being a proper master in, in, in the war, you know, he thinks up things that others don't think up. He's so sharp, he's witty, he's shrewd, and so many different qualities that he had prior to Islam. And when Islam came in, obviously these qualities were enhanced and streamlined. But at the same time, the statement of the Prophet ﷺ to the brother of Khalid ibn al-Walid when he asks him, where is Khalid? You know, he needs to come, inshallah. Ya'ti bihi Allah. Allah will bring him. Allah will bring him. And then he says, Ma mithlu Khalidin yajhalul Islam. He says, A man like Khalid cannot be ignorant of the correctness of Islam. Subhanallah. That means he's so sharp, he would definitely know that this is correct. On one hand, you have Islam, and the other hand, you have this pagan worship, and you have all these this disaster that people were engaged in for so long, known as Al Jahiliya. Sadly, we are returning to the Jahiliya, but in a very subtle way. May Allah safeguard us. So he says, a man like Khalid cannot be ignorant. Today, what about us? What about us? You know what shocks me and what hurts me and what makes me cry is the fact that today we can all read and write. Today we can all read and write. In this masjid, I'm sure, if not every single one of us can read and write. And a lot of us have been to schools. We've got qualifications, you know, primary, secondary, depending on your age, and perhaps a, a degree, and perhaps even a postgraduate, and perhaps you're working and you go so much. But subhanallah, sometimes we still haven't understood this link with Allah and the Quran, and we happen to question things in a wrong way. That's why I said there is a new jahiliya. People are trying to convince us that what the Quran has in it is not solution. A'udhu Billah. Do not misinterpret the Quran. That's one thing. So if ever you feel in your heart that there's something that I don't understand, go and seek knowledge from those who are qualified to answer your questions. And inshallah, you will have the straight up knowledge of the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. But at the same time, people become apologetic. The other day, someone was telling me, and I'm going to say this because it's in the Quran. But you know, Islam oppresses women because at the time of the death of a man, for example, he, if he has daughters and sons, the sons get double that of the daughters, and that's very, very bad. I said, brother, utter your shahada again. Well, I'm, without a joke, utter your shahada again. The way you, if you were asking a question, it's a different thing. You are making a declaration. Wallahi, it's a, fa it's a serious matter. To, to ask, my, to, to come and say, look, I don't understand why is this. That's still good enough. That, wallahi, that's good enough. You say, I know I'm a Muslim, but I don't understand why is it that women get less than men in inheritance. There is an answer to it. But if you come and say that's very bad and I disagree with it and it's terrible, it means, you know what? You've already declared yourself an enemy of the Quran and you don't even know. And that is the same Quran that's going to take you to paradise. Allahu Akbar. You know, the Quran, the hadith of the Prophet says, Al-Quran hujjatul laka aw alayk. The Quran will come and bear witness on the day of judgment either for you or against you. And why will it bear witness? It will, and on, upon what will it bear witness? Not only whether you read it or not, 
but how you made an effort to apply it, your link with it, you had a relationship with it, what type of a relationship did you have with it, you knew the verses, did you adopt them, you knew of the mercy of Allah, did you ask for it, did you try to gain it, you knew of the wrath of Allah, did you stay away from it, did you try your best to protect yourself from it, and so on. All this is part and parcel of the Quran, and that's why the hadith, the Prophet says, Inna Allah la yarfa'u bihadha al-kitabi aqwaman wa yada'u bihi akhareed. Allah elevates certain people through the Quran and through the same Quran he drops other people. Allahu Akbar. It's quite a clear cut uh, meaning hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu where it depends upon your link with the Quran. May Allah forgive us and may he make us from amongst those whom the Quran bear, bears witness for. So much so that the hadith says and it comes to my mind now يُقَالُ لِصَاحِبِ Quran On the day of Qiyamah a person who's made an effort to memorize and put into practice part of the Quran, if not all of it, it will be said to him, Iqra wartaqi wa rattil kama kunta tu rattilu fi dunya fa inna manzilaka inda akhiri ayatin taqra'uha. Do you know what that means? Amazing. It says, the person will be told on the day of judgment, read, recite as you used to in the dunya. That's why I told you read melodiously in the dunya, please. Because if you get to the akhirah, and you are one of those who, who just used to say dalin in salah, then you will be from amongst the dalin. Do you know what that means? There is an Imam, they call him Sheikh Ferrari. Why Ferrari? Because, not because he comes from Harari, no. But because he reads so quick in Taraweeh. Some people have a disease. They, they follow the Masajid which are fast. Hey, that one finishes at 12 minutes past 9. No, this one's 10 past 9. Hey, this one's 8 minutes past 9. A'udhu Billah. Is that how you're teaching the Quran? Wallahi, the people who look at the clock are far away from the Quran. They are far away from Allah. You need to look at the quality, the raha. This is the word of Allah. How dare, how dare you want to look at the clock? Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. So this man, you only hear him. He says, Allahu Akbar. You hear him say that. And after all, Alhamdulillah. That's the only thing you hear is Dalin. So I say he is Minat Dalin. He's from amongst those who are astray. What is the meaning of Dalin? It's the only word I heard. It means astray. So he's astray. Allahu Akbar. Allah forgive us. The Quran, if you read it melodiously, beautifully in the dunya, you will only be able to read on the day of judgment how you used to read whilst you were in the world. Kama kunta fi dunya. Read how you used to read in the dunya. Fa inna manzilak inda akhiri ayatin taqra'uha. You keep on going up as you read. One verse, one level. Second verse, next level. Third verse, next. And you keep on going up. And your final abode, your final status and place will be upon the last verse that you get to. Allahu Akbar. So now if you look at the explanation of that, it's quite deep, where it's not only my memorization was strong and solid. What's the point of having, I don't make any mistakes in the whole Quran, cover to cover, but you're not practicing upon it, you know. So when it comes to what, in the first Surah Baqarah, it says, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَارْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Neither did we do ruku', nor did we do salah, so we will get stuck at that verse. Stuck. Why? Because you didn't practice upon this verse. It's right at the beginning. Allahu Akbar, may Allah make it easy for us. This is the Quran. Beautiful words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you find topics changing as the rhythm changes. But here we are, we don't even know that. We haven't even made an effort. We don't even know what's going on. I hope and I pray we can change that. And this, these few words, I hope that they are words of motivation for you and I. I really hope and pray that there are words of motivation for you and I. Because wallahi, wallahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our maker. He has blessed us with this Quran. It has in it cure. You know what is cure? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nasu qad jaatkum maw'idatum min rabbikum. وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ O oh people, a reminder has come to you from your Rabb. Allah is saying, O oh people, because the reminder is for all people, not just for the believers. He doesn't say, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Ya ayyuhal nas. O oh people, a reminder has come from your Rabb to you. And cure for the diseases of the heart. Cure for what lies in the heart. Allahu Akbar. Cure. There is definitely cure in the Quran. Subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept cure in the verses of the Quran. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In it, there is guidance and mercy. But that's only for the believers. 
Subhanallah. Guidance and mercy is for who? For the believers. If you believe and you work upon it, you walk upon the guidance, you will be able to achieve the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people are asking, so why are the women oppressed? They are not. But if you understand something, and let me spend a moment since we opened that can, let's try and inshallah serve it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. In Islam, a man is supposed to be looking after the women whom he is the guardian of. The closest male relative is supposed to be providing the basics for the females whom he is the closest to in terms of the Sharia. It's either a husband or an adult son or a father or a brother if those are non-existent, meaning stage by stage, depending. If one is not there, then it goes to the other. If one has run away from his duty, it goes to the other. It doesn't mean you leave her on the street and so on. So a woman in actual fact does not really need money for anything that is necessity. If she has money, it's token for her own, I would term luxury. It's mean it's just hers. She doesn't actually have to look after someone with that wealth. She doesn't actually have to have, she's got no duties besides zakah to be paid with that wealth. But a man, if he has wealth, he's got duties, obligations. Obligations for what? Obligations upon those whom he is the guardian of, his children, his wife, maybe his mother, if he is the son and so on. And if the father is not around and what have you. So there are so many obligations. So by right, a woman a long time ago used to be inherited herself. You know, when a man owed another man money and if he died, they would say, okay, just give me his daughter and forget about the money. A'udhu billah. Just give me his wife, the widow, and forget about the money. A'udhu billah. What dignity did Islam bring to those women? That is prohibited. It is wrong. It's haram. So much so that even the marriages where someone says, I take, I will marry your sister and you will marry my sister and we will cut out the dowry and so on. That's wrong. Completely unacceptable. You can't do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So Islam honored the woman by saying, you know what? You are not a commodity. You are not a mere tool for business. Today, if you take a look at women, they have been reduced to a tool of business. They want to advertise, for example, uh, electric cables, electric cables, and they'll have a naked woman next to it. Doing what? If you touch those type of cables, you'll be burnt. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But they want... So to advertise anything, they have a woman. Why? Because she doesn't realize we've been reduced to a little tool of attraction. And this is why the women of the West, sometimes when they realize what's going on and they say, you know, I've been brought up just to impress and attract the opposite sex. And I've been made to understand that that's what life is all about. When they see the beauty of Islam, they realize the value for themselves. Their link with Allah. It's not all about impressing, impressing the opposite sex. But sadly, because of so much of technology that has been misused by us, sometimes even our own daughters and our own women happen to be falling in that, let alone the men. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us all. So, Allah says a woman will not be sold and she will not be used as a commodity. In fact, she will be acknowledged as a human being by giving her a share, even though she doesn't really need something. Give her. So now, and I'm going to give you an example. A man dies. He leaves behind one son and one daughter. And he leaves behind 75, let's make it interesting. 75 million Qatari riyals. Mashallah. Interesting. So the son gets 50 million and the daughter gets 25 million. And this, the, this daughter, is the closest relative to the daughter, male relative, is that son, my brother. Because she's not married, she, her father's just passed away, she doesn't have any other brothers. This is the brother. So now what happens? Islam says, listen sister, that 25 million is yours. You can do what you want with it. And this guy's 25 million, he has to look after his wife and children with it, and he has to. And on top of that, all your basic requirements, he must provide for you. Allahu Akbar. Who has more money? Divide it. This guy has to divide his 50 million in five people. 10 million each. And that one, 25 million, I'm still sitting with it. And it's mine. Take a look at who got more. But people don't look as deep as that. And 
they find fault in the Quran because the men are not practicing upon that. We run away from our sisters. My sister, what will happen is when my dad dies, I'll try to steal even the 25 million from her. I will undervalue the property and say, oh sister, that, vo that property is only 1 million real. She say, oh, are you sure? My okay, no problem. And I know it's 10 million. I'm cheating her. She's a woman. A'udhu billah. This is what's going on in the ummah. So people are thinking bad of us, not because Allahu Akbar, the Quran is wrong, not because, meaning there's not, no flaw in the Quran at all, but because we are the ones who are not practicing upon the teachings of Islam. And we don't even want to know them. So you are supposed to be looking after them. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may He safeguard us. And this is why we say there will be verses in the Quran that sometimes people may not understand. They are verses of ahkam. They are verses of rules and regulations. You know, a, a young boy came to me and I was so touched because it proved that he reads the Quran. He says, I read in the Quran that it's okay to drink, to drink alcohol. And I'm, I know it's haram because I'm a Muslim. So can you explain to me what's going on? Look at the wording, beautiful wording. Look, a young boy words it so respectfully because he says, I know it's haram. I know I'm not allowed and I know alcohol is abomination. But how come there's a verse of the Quran which says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara hatta ta'lamu, hatta ta'lamu ma taqulun. Oh you who believe, do not come close to salah and if you are in, a, in an intoxicated state until you are sane and you know what you are saying. Subhanallah. So I said, that actually is not allowing or permitting drinking. It was only dealing with a certain stage. Alcohol has been prohibited in four stages. And then I explained to him how that initially the, you know, the, the people were involved in alcohol and intoxicants in a very big way. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a hatred in the hearts of the believers for this item. And when the hatred was in, he cut, he cut it completely and he says, فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ the next, the verse came later on in Medina Munawwara where it was totally prohibited. And what did the Sahaba radiallahu anhum do? The few of them who were still involved, they had immediately spat it out. They dropped it out and it is reported that the gullies and alleys of Medina were flowing because everybody got rid of whatever they had immediately. So he understood it. He says, oh, mashallah, at least now I know what's going on. And that's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there comes other people who say, I disagree with this and disagree with that. Why do you call yourself a Muslim if you want to disagree? Muslim is the one who has surrendered. It's the word of Allah. And trust me, those who have read the other books, the testaments and everything else that is in existence in terms of spiritual directories, you will find that the Quran is on a league of its own, completely of its own. There is nothing that can compete with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who dedicate our lives to the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu My brothers and sisters, promise yourselves and promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not a day will pass without us having something to do with the Quran. Read it, understand it, read its meaning, even if it means one single verse. Talk about it, speak to others, go to work and say, today I read this verse, this is what it is. You are adopting the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Convey from me, even if it means a single verse, a small amount, but convey it. May Allah subhanahu Subhanahu wa ta'ala use me to do that and use every one of you to do that. Jazakumullahu khaira wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.